Hey kids, I'm really excited about today's lesson. You know, we've been talking a lot about music and science and how sound works. You see, sound travels through air in waves and those waves have different frequencies or speeds. It works this way. A high pitch has a fast frequency. A low pitch has a slow frequency. All right, now check this out. This is a function generator. It's a piece of equipment that allows me to change the frequency to anything I want. What I can do then is send a signal through this cord and into a machine like this. What this does is this vibrates a metal plate with a string connected to it. And when I start our function generator, it sends that frequency into the string, creating a wave. Now I'm excited to tell you about how all this works in today's episode of Music, Music is, is Science. science. <laughs> Sound waves bounce. They bounce off the floor, the ceiling, the walls, even off of you. They also move very, very quickly at around 767 miles per hour. So what I want to do right now is I want to slow that speed way down. And we're going to use this wave demonstrator to do it. All right, now I'm going to send a wave down this demonstrator and it's going to hit a fixed point. Let's pretend like this is a wall or something. See how I've got it clamped? That's our fixed point. Then when it bounces, I want you to notice the direction it bounces. So if I send a wave that's going up, it hits that fixed point and it comes back the opposite direction. It reflects at an inverse relationship. Peaks become valleys. Now let's imagine we were to speed this way, 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 way up. So we're now the sound is traveling at 767 miles per hour, right? It would be going so fast that those peaks and those valleys would almost look like they're right on top of each other, creating a standing wave. All right, now right here, we've got our string and it's going to be moving at different frequencies. So we're sending this, the wave back and forth so fast that it creates these really cool standing wave patterns. Now, the points uh, where the waves are closest together are called the nodes and the points where they're the furthest apart are called antinodes. You're always going to have one more node than antinode. Here, let me explain why. Right here we have three waves, right? So three antinodes. Then we also have one, two, three, four nodes because you have to have one to start and you have to have one to finish. As I change my frequency, the number of waves, the number of antinodes is gonna change. So here's one giant wave, right? We've got this antinode right here, a node here, and a node over there. Then if I increase our frequency, we get two very clear waves, two antinodes, and now one, two, three nodes. Let's keep going. Now we have three waves. Four waves, how cool is that? Isn't that awesome? Let's keep it going. One, two, three, four, five waves. Keep it going. Right there, that's six waves. Here's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we go further? There's eight, they're getting smaller. Their amplitude, their height is getting shorter, but we've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight waves. There's nine, can you see them? There's nine right there. Can we get 10 waves? Oh yeah, 10 tiny little waves. Ha <laughs> ha, I love it. You know guys, this is a great way for us to visualize waves, the different parts of waves, like the nodes, the antinodes. We can also measure the wavelengths and how as the frequency got higher, our wavelengths got shorter. It's also important when we talk about musical things like tuning and making sure that our nodes and antinodes match when different instruments are playing the same pitches. In the next episode, we're not only gonna be able to visualize nodes and antinodes, we're gonna hear nodes and antinodes. So stay tuned for next time. Thanks for watching.